In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the changes from the Diablo Immortal Alpha to now the current Diablo Immortal Beta. So to begin with, we have a few additions to the game, such as recommended builds, Ivan Fard's Sanctum, the Hell Aquary has been changed to an eight player raid. We now have some much needed changes to the Rite of Exile. We've got Gear Awakening, there's been a few minor graphical updates, Cash Shop has been added along with the Necromancer class and also set items and the Battlegrounds has received an update as well. So let's take a deeper look here and we'll start off with Ivan Fard's Sanctum. Ivan Fard's Sanctum is unlocked when you reach level 55 and are playing in Hell difficulty. You will find vessels from completing world events such as Ancient Nightmare or the uh, Hydra or Sandstone Golem in the Library of Zoltan Kul. Once you collect the vessels, you can then enter the Sanctum and then you can upgrade them here and make them stronger and gain some permanent stat boosts as well. Let's take a quick look at these. We have Nilfir's Precision, which increases your armor penetration. Taurashar's Authority, which increases your damage. We have Guilt of the Nameless, which increases your resistance. We have Nortaraj's Knowledge, which increases your life. We have Kavasan's Compassion, which increases your armor penetration and armor. We have Ivan Fard's Tenacity, which increases your damage and also your life. We have Zoltan Kul's Ingenuity, which increases your potency. And we have Jared Kane's Vision, which increases your armor. There's also one more that is not unlocked yet. It's not added in the game. So each day, once per day, you can enter the Sanctum Depths. And this is where you participate in just a mini dungeon. It doesn't take long to get through. And then you can unlock upgrade materials at the end of this dungeon. So the mobs in this dungeon will drop a couple of Aspirant's Keys. And then we can use these keys at the end of the dungeon to unlock these chests. Each day you get one for free, but they don't drop a whole lot of upgrade materials. And then the first four chests only cost one key each. So you normally have enough keys from the dungeon to unlock all the other ones as well. In this particular dungeon, I got three keys. I think I've also had five keys dropped. So it just sort of depends. But once you get all the chests unlocked in one of these areas and then unlocks another area where there's a few minions to kill and then you can unlock more chests. So the first couple of rooms after this, they cost eight each, but then they drop stacks of nine materials. So you get quite a lot more upgrade materials by going into these ones, but it does cost a lot more keys to unlock. And then once you unlock all of those, you move on to the very last one, they start costing 56 keys each. And if you unlock them all, you also get a special bonus in the middle. So let's go ahead, we'll unlock them all. It's a lot of keys. Um, I'm actually going to have to spend a little bit of platinum for you guys to unlock all these. So I don't quite have this many keys, but you get a really good amount of upgrade materials from these. So it costs 2800 platinum to open if you don't have enough keys. So we shall do that. We'll smash these open. What's a bit of platinum? So bam, bam, bam. And then we get our special one in the middle. Yeah. Now what's in the middle one? Who would know? You would think that would be something amazing, right? Right? Dun, dun, dun. It's not actually that good, to be honest. It's, it's a small bonus, but it's not really worth it. And then we can go back and we can upgrade these and gain more permanent buffs. So at level four, it costs 200 of each of one upgrade material to upgrade. And then from rank five onwards, it looks like it's 400 each time, which is quite expensive, really. I mean, free to play players are gonna struggle with that a bit. I think you get quite a few of the keys on the battle pass, but yeah, otherwise your upgrade materials are gonna come in very, very slowly. We also now have Legendary Awakening, which requires a rank 10 Legendary Gem to upgrade a weapon or armor piece and gain some additional bonuses. This is nearly impossible for a free to play player as you have to spend 1000 Eternal Orbs on a particular item in the store to even be able to do this. So it's really not free to play friendly and these gems are actually really expensive to upgrade to level 10 in the first place. 
It is an incredible shame to see this sort of thing in the game where it is actually completely paywalled, this end game feature. There's no way about it. But I have a few screenshots here of some of the upgrades. So for example, on these pants, the dark curse cooldown was decreased. Um, this one, corpse lance damage is increased and it also extends further. And on this one here, skeletal mage life is increased. So it's not massive bonuses, but they do add up for sure. There's also been a few mob updates to the game, such as the Broodmother here and her um, hatchlings. These guys have had a fairly major overhaul, actually. I'm going to show you a quick video here from the early access, where you'll be able to see an instant change between these guys. See, these guys are now... They were previously really green like this, and now they look so much better. In addition to this, <clears throat> We also now have crag worms in the Shasar Sea. These guys look really cool as well. They've added in like a few like bigger minions to uh, into the mix, which is really nice. I very much enjoyed encountering these for the first time. All right, let's take a quick look at the real money shop. Big uh, source of nastiness for this game. So to start with, you can buy eternal orbs and platinum. Well, you buy the eternal orbs with real money. You then can buy those, <laughs> spend those eternal orbs to buy platinum. It's so stupid. Um, along with that, we've got an empowered battle pass. This is going to unlock the second row of the battle pass where you can get Aspirant's keys, um, Scoria to upgrade your Hel Helicry, along with some uh, gems and like legendary pres presents, uh, crests. You've also got the Boon of Plenty, which gives you 300 eternal orbs, increased trade slots, additional storage, and also gives you one rare crest each day. And that gives you that for uh, 30 days, and you can stack it up to uh, 90 days as well. So you can buy it three times if, for whatever reason. I'm not real sure. Um, along with that, we have bundles. Uh, the bundles seem to be okay value, though. They give you a whole bunch of like gems, crests, scoria, and um, eternal orbs. You normally would get them at the end of like a dungeon as you progress through the story. It's just one time purchases and that's it. But you do get a free daily reward each day. Uh, this really annoys me with the materials. These are used to change uh, the family, upgrade family of your uh, weapons and armor. And now these are completely paywalled. You can't earn them pretty much any other way. This Dawning Echo, this is what I was talking about before. This is used to awaken your weapons. This costs 1,000 Eternal Orbs. That's completely paywalled feature now, which is ridiculous. And then we can buy rare crests and legendary crests, which are obviously very much needed to get the legendary gems to then be able to awaken your weapons. But we'll talk about that in another video, I guess. We've also got the Necromancer added. I'm not going to discuss him too much here. I'm going to be making a video very soon covering him in much further depth, but we spin him around. He looks really cool and he's actually really fun to play. But we also now have set items. Set items are really, they're really powerful, especially like the Shepherd's set here for the Necromancer increases your damage done by your summons and also your critical strike chance per summon. It's a really powerful set. I'm trying to get it all. It's taking forever. It's a big grind. The set pieces don't drop that often, but they are not super uncommon. If you play in the dungeons that are that are like boosted for the week, you can get much more drops. So there's a whole bunch of different sets. You then need the then you need to equip three pieces or six pieces to get the bonuses. So it will take a while to unlock um, enough pieces to be able to make it effective, I guess. But we will discover more of those as time goes on. We also now have recommended builds. These are basically just a way to get like a bit of gold. You get pretty much 10 grand, uh, 10k gold each time you collect enough pieces. And I guess it's just the game's way of recommending you some particular builds for like PV PVE or, or PVP. So like you unlock certain skills, you unlock the legendary items, all the set items and so forth, and you can like complete one of these collections and it basically just gives you gold. And sort of just shows you like, yeah, like this is a decent option, like you equip all this stuff together, you get like these bonuses and that's pretty good. 
Uh, Battlegrounds received a good update. It now has a rating mode. So as you play, depending on how well you do, you either gain or lose rating. And then you can get rewards each time you move up a bracket and also at the end of a season. You get a whole bunch of rewards as well. A ton of reforged stones if you're like number one. Um, there is also a leaderboard, but it doesn't really appear to be working just yet. Now the Helicry raids have been increased, have been changed to an eight player raid. So you can either enter someone else's raid that they have created, or you can also create a raid for yourself. You can then set the join options for that raid to be open, invite, or like leader invite only. And you can also choose the different uh, minions or raid boss that you want to fight. So at the moment, there's only Lasso available. I'm not sure if they're planning on unlocking any of the others during the beta, but got a bit of gameplay here from Lasso. I mean, uh, some guys from the clan. Went and took him down. He's fairly easy now that everyone's sort of geared up. And you also um, get a couple of legendaries, and this is one place where you get one of the vessels from, which is Tower Rashar's authority as well. Now the Rite of Exile saw a big needed update. Instead of just like the top number one house becoming the Immortals, it goes through a couple stages where, like the first stage, you have the usual battleground mode, and then the houses that could win that can then progress over to this to the next mode where it's one massive as a mortal versing all the shadows. And then once they win that, whichever houses are left, they choose their three best players. And then it's sort of, it's a three versus three versus ever how many houses there are left. Whichever house wins that, that three versus three effectively, they then become the immortals, which is a much better system because then even a house that maybe not be ranked Super high, they might be the 10th house on the rankings. If they have some strong players, then they can still, they could still win it, which is much fairer. All right, guys, that's been a bit of a look of some of the core changes from the alpha to now the beta. Hope you've liked that. And thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon in another video. All right, take care.